We have the 100 uh, billion uh, commitment, um, as said in June in Paris, and we iterated here. But many countries need to do uh, more efforts. It is one cannot say that uh, we will um, achieve um, uh, the Paris um, Agreement um, uh, goals uh, without phasing out uh, fossil fuels. And this is very much at the heart of the strategy that we're working on together with our partners uh, for the jet piece, partnerships for, for, for um, just the energy transition together with uh, um, South Africa, uh, Senegal, and Indonesia. And this is very much what we've been discussing with a number of partners, including uh, uh, Prime Minister Modi. But more generally, with uh, all emerging countries, uh, we need to phase out a uh, uh, call and much faster faster than we are doing. And we need to work on phasing out oil as well, because I can hear some telling us that uh, beyond uh, 2040, 2045, we could still uh, leave uh, with oil uh, while comply with the goals set in the Paris Agreement. But I think this is not the case. This is not true. I know it's difficult. It is uh, 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 troubling for a number of emerging countries. Nonetheless, um, we have to look at science. Lastly, I would like to say that we had a chance to talk about technology on um, artificial intelligence. France has a dub double purpose. We want to develop innovation and investments and make sure there is no technological and digital divide um, on the issue of artificial intelligence. We want all of the G20 countries to have access to it for their development. And in addition, it is absolutely necessary to regulate these technologies, make sure that there is no uh, fake or manipulation of information, um, and anything that would uh, threaten our democracies. So we support the idea of international regulations, and just like we did on, on minimal taxation uh, and in other uh, topics, uh, we work together with the OECD, and together with Canada in particular, uh, we launched a, a partnership for, international artif um, artif for artificial intelligence, and, uh, together with the support of the OECD, and the OECD can gather the international community beyond its members, and it is very much necessary for the purpose of regulating um, um, IA. And once again, I would like to commend the Indian presidency of the G20. Brazil will take over, and um, they have our full confidence. We will work together with them closely on um, um, a number of topics, um, protection of forestry, uh, food sovereignty, social justice. And as you know, since 2018, we've been, been uh, strong, strongly advocating these topics. Without further ado, I'm all yours for your questions. Mr. President, good afternoon. Back to the G20. This compromise seems to be um, um, not exactly what France was expecting, and Ukraine uh, expected expressed their disappointment, uh, whereas Russia seems to be uh, said they were satisfied. So is this due to the emerging countries? Next, on climate change, uh, you express your concerns and uh, you're calling um, um, to, to do more. Is this a bad signal at this G20 ahead of COP28? First of all, um, let us face it, let's be honest that the G20 is not a forum for political discussions. It was um, uh, uh, revived at the time of the financial um, crisis a uh, um, few years ago. And we're here to mainly talk about um, uh, economic topics and climate change. So I think uh, the G20 should not get um, stuck into some other issues. But of course, and of course, we know that we disagree on Ukraine, given that Russia is a member of the G20. But as a matter of fact, things have been said. The G20 said it supports a just and, and lasting peace. This is exactly the opposite of what uh, Russia is saying. And uh, the G20 itself um, re-expressed our support to territorial integrity and the UN Charter. 
So that's it. But that being said, this is not the place where we will uh, see some uh, major developments, given in particular what the situation is on the ground. And um, we have here 16 members of the G20 who voted, um, approved all um, uh, the um, um, resolutions that condemn Russia, three abstained and, and one voted against, and of course this is Russia. So Russia precisely is in a very um, isolated position at the G20. Nonetheless, this is not the place for major diplomatic moves. On climate change, I think there's one point, financing, on which we've achieved some major progress, and this is essential, I believe. And I believe we um, collectively contributed to it, and France, uh, with uh, the summit that we organized back in June uh, with the Pact for uh, the Peoples and the Planet, I believe, uh, was helpful for the Indian presidency. But let me uh, sound the alarm. We are not there yet, and I can feel this um, a little tune growing um, uh, from on different sides, and we have to speak the truth, uh, talking to the emerging countries. It is expensive for us as well. We know what uh, the energy transition costs in terms of public investments, of uh, changing our ways of living for many people, um, the fears as well that it generates. But it is legitimate and normal that we play that role. At the same time, we need to uh, re-engage with the emerging countries to phase out coal by 2030 and as soon as possible um, phase out um, uh, fuel as well. And, and those who are telling us emerging countries, no, 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 we're making a lot of money with oil at the moment, so let's not phase it out. This is not possible. Of course, it will take more time for gas, but far before 2050, we need to phase out um, coal and oil. So let us, uh, of course, there shall be no, we cannot be high critical. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Une question d'un média indien. India-France uh, strategic partnership uh, in the context of the fragmented geopolitical environment. Uh, India has uh, decided to uh, procure uh, Rafale fighter jets uh, for the Indian Navy. When can we expect uh, announcement of a deal in this regard? And uh, uh, lastly, in fact, how do you see uh, the overall uh, presidency of India? Thank you. Thank you so much. Look, um, First, I think we have a very strong Tout d'abord, euh, nous avons un partenariat euh, stratégique extrêmement dynamique. Nous euh, avons un partenariat de défense très fort. Nous l'avons renforcé ces dernières années. La visite euh, qu'a effectuée le Premier ministre indien en, à Paris euh, le 14 juillet était un moment essentiel dans euh, ce euh, partenariat. Je, euh, le peuple français était très fier de cette visite. Les Français ont ressenti euh, cette amitié et ce respect pour euh, votre pays et nous avons euh, signé euh, davantage de contrats et également euh, adopté une feuille de route. Nous allons nous déployer sur tous les secteurs de la feuille de route en matière de défense des euh, contrats additionnels dans les mois et les années à venir sur l'espace. Nous avons également euh, adopté un nouveau partenariat. Euh, sur les activités et les industries nucléaires, il existe euh, d'ores et déjà une feuille de route. Nous avons ajouté quelques étapes euh, cruciales sur l'action que nous allons mener ensemble sur les infrastructures, l'économie, les start-up, la euh, technologie, les transports et de très nombreux autres secteurs, sans oublier la culture. Il va y avoir un suivi de ce qui se fait, à mon avis, ce partenariat est stratégique et euh, euh, est en train d'être enrichi dans tous les secteurs. Et c'est pour cette raison que ce partenariat n'est pas uniquement un partenariat euh, bilatéral. Et il y a une euh, plus grande intimité, si je peux m'exprimer ainsi, euh, pour la région et pour 
pour le monde. Nous devons préserver les équilibres dans l'environnement mondial actuel. Nous devons résister à la fragmentation du monde et nous devons travailler ensemble pour trouver des solutions, pour proposer des solutions au monde sur ce qui fait sens. C'est exactement la philosophie euh, qui euh, nous inspirait lorsque nous avons lancé l'Alliance solaire avec le euh, Premier ministre indien. L'Alliance la, solaire internationale est l'une des, des meilleures incarnations de cette philosophie. Il en va de même euh, pour ce que nous avons fait hier ensemble avec euh, les Émirats arabes unis, l'Arabie saoudite et les États-Unis avec d'autres collègues sur euh, ce corridor qui part de l'Inde et qui arrive sur les côtes de la Méditerranée, euh, corridor euh, de, de transport. Et c'est exactement de cette façon que nous avons travaillé avec votre Premier ministre pour préparer cette présidence avec le sommet de Paris et cette présidence pour euh, instaurer une dynamique sur un certain nombre de sujets allant du climat au financement. Je pense que cette présidence dans l'environnement actuel et dans ce monde euh, fragmenté euh, et toutes ces difficultés que nous voyons est un, euh, donne une impulsion extrêmement importante et enrichissante. C'est pour cela que je voudrais remercier le Premier ministre indien et je suis euh, je m'engage euh, à l'égard de cet euh, agenda bilatéral. Merci. Question from Philippe Ricard, Le Monde. Merci, bonjour. Thank you. Good afternoon. A question about Niger. I would like to know what your reaction is to the accusations of uh, the junta accusing France of preparing a military intervention against Niger, first of all. And second, uh, where stand uh, the discussions or uh, the thinking of uh, France as to the redeployment of um, the French um, troops? Uh, would you redeploy within Niger? Uh, would you repatriate some of our soldiers? Could you tell us more about it? Thank you very much. Uh, the French forces came to Niger um, at the request of Niger, and we're there to tackle terrorism at the request of Niger, and uh, their elected representatives, um, i.e. President Bazoum and um, the Parliament of Niger. We had an efficient action that um, strongly um, restricted um, the activities of terrorists uh, in Niger and um, our soldiers who fell in Niger and their families on my mind as we speak. At the moment, this military uh, junta is taking hostage the president who was democratically elected. So we condemn it. We call upon um, President Bazoum Singh set free, and we do not recognize uh, the, um, those um, who led the coup. Because President Bazoum does not give up. And should we um, give in, I, would, I will only do it on the request of President Bazoum and in coordination with him, not um, dealing with those keeping him hostage. And France is um, currently um, um, working in close cooperation with um, the presidents of the regions, and we strongly support the decisions, uh, the positions taken by ECOWAS. ECOWAS condemned that coup, adopted sanctions. Um, like um, others, and uh, ECOWAS is still working on setting President Bazoum free, and uh, France stands um, by them and supports them. I have no further comment. The situation is freezing everything de facto because the only person we can talk to is President Bazoum. One more question. Monsieur le Président, nous avons vu le projet qui a été lancé sur la connectivité. Est-ce que vous pouvez nous en parler et quel rôle la France va y jouer, quel rôle l'Inde va-t-elle y jouer et qu'est-ce que cela apportera à la région et au monde euh, merci, euh, merci. Euh, il est très important d'avoir un tel projet qui va de l'Inde à la Méditerranée. Nous, nous sommes engagés pour le financement. Nous sommes engagés. Nous sommes en train de travailler avec la Banque mondiale, les États-Unis, euh, l'Union européenne, l'Arabie saoudite, les Émirats.
Émirats Arabes Unis et un certain nombre d'autres acteurs pour mettre de l'argent en commun pour la réalisation de ce corridor. Deuxièmement, nous allons... Euh, donc le projet a été lancé hier et il va nous falloir trouver le financement. Et l'idée, c'est de faire un package unique et de décider de la nature des infrastructures. Euh, ce que nous voulons, donc, ce sont des infrastructures zéro émission, euh, connectivité sur le, le thème du transport, connectivité en matière de, euh, techno, de, de communication, de technologie. Et également, euh, les, nous avons en France de très nombreuses entreprises qui travaillent dans toutes ces dans tous ces secteurs, énergie, transport, connectivité, et donc elles participeront très certainement à la mise en œuvre de ces projets. Nous allons également mettre en place une structure qui va décider des diverses phases et qui va allouer les ressources à ces différentes phases et à leur financement, et les entreprises françaises en feront euh, partie. Et donc nous l'avons lancé hier, et aujourd'hui il va nous falloir tout organiser, peut-être faciliter les choses, éviter l'excès de bureaucratie, et euh, 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 renforcer c'est l'implication de tous. Another question from Le Monde, from BFM TV. You said that France stood ready to um, provide some assistance to Morocco when uh, the authorities uh, consider it appropriate. Um, we're now 36 hours down the road, um, and of course the, the, the needs are huge. Uh, would you like the, front, the French um, assistance to reach Morocco as soon as possible? Uh, we, you referred to a message, but did you talk to him? Thank you very much. I had um, a long discussion with um, His Majesty the King uh, a few days ago, um, ahead uh, of, uh, before the earthquake. He was uh, um, uh, then on the plane or on the ground when we um, uh, texted each other and I sent him a letter. Uh, first and foremost, uh, we want to do what is useful to the Moroccan people and, and allow me once again to express our solidarity. Uh, my thoughts um, also go to the millions of uh, binationals, uh, uh, people who are both French and Moroccans, uh, who live uh, in France or in Morocco. Uh, this is very much um, impacting uh, all of us. Uh, the next, um, the um, foreign affairs in Paris are, are um, crisis center, Minister of the Interior, uh, um, uh, Defense Ministry as well. Is they're all uh, working on that. They're available. The Moroccan authorities know exactly what we can provide and when. So, but that, of course, it is now in their hands. It is uh, the local authorities who know what is useful and who can coordinate. So we stand available and we put everything um, together. And the moment, the second when they ask, we will deploy. But of course, it is for the Moroccan authorities uh, uh, to make the necessary decisions depending on what is happening on the ground. And uh, they have and. Uh, they, they're rightly uh, taking, um, uh, doing what is necessary to properly organize things. Then, in parallel, we are trying to mobilize and get organized, and this is the reason why this morning I talked to the representatives of the IMF and the World Bank and the um, president of the uh, European Commission and the president of the, the chair of the African Union to mobilize at an international level a broader international support to prepare for a speedy reconstruction. So I believe we're doing our utmost from where we are by uh, telling uh, Morocco that we stand available, and I fully trust the Moroccan authorities uh, for um, being uh, as organized as necessary. And once again, let me express our solidarity and our friendship. One last question. Bonjour, Monsieur le Président. Je voudrais savoir combien a-t-il fallu à tous les membres du G20 pour parvenir à un consensus euh, sur la déclaration de Delhi. Vous avez également euh, dit que la Russie ne devrait faire partie, n'a pas sa place au G20. Est-ce que vous pourriez nous en parler euh, euh, un peu Donc, vous avez dit que le G20 était une plateforme économique, puis vous dites que ce n'est pas sa place. Pardon, il y a peut-être eu un, euh, une question de, 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 de traduction. 
Constitution. Tout d'abord, la déclaration, eh bien, il a fallu un certain temps à nos chers pas, mais c'est magnifique quand on parvient à un résultat. Alors, je ne veux pas exagérer le rôle que nous avons joué pour le texte auquel nous sommes parvenus. Il y a eu un consensus entre nos chers pas et entre les capitales, et il était assez facile de parvenir à ce texte dans le cadre des discussions entre les capitales. J'ai insisté sur les succès et euh, j'ai également dit où nous pouvions encore faire des progrès, mais je ne vais pas m'attarder là-dessus. Sur la Russie, euh, en fait, j'ai dit effectivement que le cœur de, du travail de ce forum, c'était l'économie et la coordination sur les affaires du monde. Bien évidemment, euh, la, la, la finance, le climat euh, et, 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 et l'économie, pas forcément les aspects politiques. Donc, c'est bien d'avoir ces discussions de temps en temps, mais il ne faudrait pas que nos discussions trébuchent ou bloquent sur un point. Deuxième observation, ils sont de facto un membre du G20. Le président Poutine n'est pas là parce qu'il fait l'objet de sanctions par un certain nombre d'entre nous et pour de bonnes raisons parce que euh, je crois que ce qui se passe est extrêmement grave et c'est un sujet d'inquiétude pour euh, de très nombreux pays. Mais je, en fait, je ne voulais pas dire que nous devrions exclure quelqu'un du club maintenant. Ce serait contre-productif. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I'm on my way to Bangladesh now and I'm um, very pleased. And once again, uh, let me thank... Um, Prime Minister Modi, uh, the Indian authorities and the Indian people for their hospitality. Thank you.